first part of the, the substantial part of the program, which is to do an update on where we are in the European Union and in Korea on our research and development programs for beyond 5G and 6G. On the European side, uh, we are giving the floor to the representatives of the stakeholders. And um, that starts with Mr. Dr. Colin Wilcock, who is the chair of the 6G Infrastructure Association. In Colin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Let me try and share my screen. So is my screen visible in a reasonable way? Is that fine? Yes. Super. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> thank you for the feedback. I've got multiple screens, so sometimes it gives problems. Anyway, good morning or, or good afternoon, depending on where you are sitting in the world. I wanted to give a short update from the 6G point of view of what's going on in the EU. So as we said last time, there are a number of activities which are ongoing associated with the previous research program, 5G PPP. We have HexaX. Uh, we have actually 10 projects running on 6G. But what I wanted to concentrate was not those existing projects, but the next stage in the story, this smart networks and services, where there have been some definite progress since last time we talked. So let me talk first, just reminding you about myself and the organization I represent. If you heard the first workshop, this is repeating, but maybe there are some new people. So maybe I can just give them this context. So I'm representing an organization called the 6GIA. And, and we try and be the voice of all things 5G and all things 6G. And we have within our organization, the, the large companies, the Nokia, the Ericsson, the Samsung, but also the operators, um, Orange and, and all the rest, Docomo and what have you. But we also have the SMEs, the universities and the research institutes. So we have the, the whole ecosystem within not just Europe, but also many global players trying to um, agree on the way forward in 5G evolution and 6G development. And one of the key things we're involved in is trying to drive European research. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. So together with the European Com Commission, we have had the, I think we can claim successful research program, 5G PPP, which has been running since 2014 and has been looking at 5G and beginning to look at 6G. And we are now about to start, or indeed have started, this new research program, Smart Network and Services, which is what I want to touch on today. So we see this very much as the future of European research is Smart Networks and Services. And as you will see, there, has a, a, there is a, a series of targets or objectives we have with this research program. Clearly, we wish to further 6G research, so do a lot of the fundamental 6G research within smart networks and services. We wish to develop also the end-to-end -end view, so not just the radio part, but the applications. So really taking it all the way from the application layer on the server side to the application layer on the user side. Um, think about those use cases and applications, trying to make sure that we retain some of the um, good leadership positions we have in this domain in Europe, and trying to make sure that we can tackle some of these societal problems, the, the green revolution, um, the trying to reduce the carbon footprint, the trying to basically use resources in an optimal way, and trying to digitize industries, the so-called vertical industries, trying to make sure that we can provide a competitive digital infrastructure in Europe, but really provide that to the world. Because again, the message here is not that 
you will, will or can do this alone. 6G will be a global standard. We want it to be a global standard. That is why we are sitting here today, if you will. And we then need to work together with other regions like Korea, trying to make sure that we align what we are trying to do and we come up with one standard which will provide the, these global solutions to the world. I put in one slide to try and show the breadth of what is within the research area for smart networks and services. And you will see that it is very broad, much broader than the existing research program, that it really goes from the very top of the stack, the applications, all the way down to the physical layer. And because we believe that 6G will be more than just 5G plus, we believe it will bring in new technologies like AI, um, IoT, um, big data. We, we need to try and bring in these aspects as well and try and have a integrated solution where we can use these technologies and really leverage these technologies to improve the situations and tackle those challenges of the future. So what has changed since last time we talked? So I presented pretty much the same material last time we talked about what we were aiming to do. What has changed is now this program has started. So Smart Network and Services has started. The program, the partnership, the JU partnership required a European act of law this has now been passed by the European Council, so it exists, it is going. And what this means is that the Office for Smart Network and Services is beginning to be set up, and the first call has now been made public. So this will be a fairly large program overall. It starts now, if you will. It will be running for seven or eight years. It will be investing 900 million euros of public money and that at least that amount of money will also be invested by private industry so at least 1.8 billion euros will be invested in these areas over the next seven years the expectation is that we will have a hundred plus projects over that time frame and indeed the first call, which has now been made public, shows the ambition level for the whole program. So this first call, which has now been made public, is for has 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 opened in in this month uh, in last month. Forgive me. <laughs> opened in January. Uh, the call closes in April, and those projects will start either the end of this year or the beginning of next year. The volume, the amount of public funding is 240 million euros. And we're expecting about 35 projects. The, the areas that we are looking at are shown below. So it broadly breaks down into two halves. Partially, we're trying to take an evolutionary approach. So we're trying to say, okay, let us evolve 5G towards 6G. And the other side, the slightly larger side is, let's start with a clean piece of paper and develop 6G. And the reason for these two approaches, the evolutionary and the revolutionary, is at the moment, no one knows what 6G will be. 6G is just a name at the moment. And the solution we come up with might be more evolutionary or might be more revolutionary. And that will be decided over time. Probably take several years before we actually know, is it more 5G-like or is it something actually unique, not like 5G? So we need to cover both those paths to make sure that we have the right solutions, the right foundation. And what we're seeing is that the discussion of technology or new areas is very similar when you look at 
5G evolution and 6G, there's a lot of common areas, the sort of areas that I was uh, showing in the previous slide here. A lot of these areas are actually being looked at, not just in 6G, but also in 5G advanced. And at the moment, we do not know where that line will be between 5G evolution and 6G. And so that's why we need to look at both. OK, I hope that's given an idea of what we're planning to do. As was said, the, the, the key point and the reason for this discussion is we cannot do this alone. This is a major program, a major partnership. But as part of this partnership, as part of Smart Networks and Services, we wish to reach out and work with other regions in the world. There is a specific support action, a specific project, which is looking for international collaboration. So we are very eager to build on the excellent collaboration we've had in 5G and, and continue and enhance that in the world of 6G. And maybe that would then be a good point to stop my discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Colin, also for being uh, extremely brief and still very comprehensive in presenting the European approach to um, 5G advanced and, and 6G. And uh, I would now want to pass the floor to um, our colleagues on the Korean side, Dr. Sungo Choi, who's the program manager of the Institute of Information and Communications Technology Planning and Evolution. The floor is yours, Dr. Choi. Thank you. Uh, good morning and good, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Song Choi. Uh, let me share my slide first. Can you hear me clearly? Okay. So I, I am in charge of Korean uh, R&D planning on 5G and 6G technology. So today I will give you a short introduction to Korean 6G R&D project. This slide... Um, Okay, so this slide shows the uh, contents of today's presentation. Actually, I borrowed some slides from uh, last year's uh, presentation. So I will uh, skip uh, several uh, slides if you are familiar with, but I will touch very briefly the contents on the slide. The slide borrowed, by, uh, borrowed from last year's presentation. Um, so as you know, uh, first and second generation were mainly for voice service and third generation, first generation were mainly for mobile data service. So everybody knows 5G is mainly focused on vertical new service, but we believe is 6G spec uh, to spread those services through innovative technologies. So future services uh, development 5G triggers convergent service, as you know, uh, vertical. But now uh, 6G is expected to support convergent services, of applying and adv advancing stably in all industries. So this slide I like, uh, showing the 5G uh, technologies uh, limitations. So traffic volume, end-to-end -end latency, coverage are the limitations of 5G and AI adaptation has been limited in uh, 5G technologies. So 6G technologies will be uh, developed in order to overcome the limitations of 5G technology and expand the scope of application. So this is schedule, everybody understand. So we expect the 3GPP start the 6G discussion, possibly ne from next year or 2024, but we expect until 2027 or 2028 standard will be completed. So this slide uh, was presented last year, uh, the meeting. I was I uh, shared the
from last year, Korea started uh, uh, R&D project. So today I want to share all most of the detailed list and uh, detailed of a 6G project for your information. Uh, this slide also came from last year uh, uh, presentation. Uh, Korea uh, 6G R&D uh, coverage includes the wireless communication, RF component and optical communication and wire, wire uh, communication and also uh, low earth orbit uh, satellite communication. Uh, we uh, categorize those communication technology into five. The first ultra performance, second ultra bandwidth, third ultra space, fourth uh, ultra precision, uh, five is ultra intelligence. Using this category, uh, this slide shows a summary of a uh, full list of Korean 6G R&D project. Uh, there are nine 6G R&D projects and also uh, seven 6G research center project. Uh, the uh, seven 6G research center project are led by universities and 6G R&D project led by industry and also R&D centers. So let me uh, introduce those nine uh, 6G R&D project. They categorized the five, ultra performance, ultra bandwidth, ultra space, ultra precision, ultra intelligence. The first project is titled TeraBPS Level Wireless Communication Technology. This project will develop the technologies supporting one TeraBPS maximum data rate using over 100 gigahertz spectrum band. Uh, various wireless technologies will be the scope of research and the result will be uh, proposed to start our standard. The second project is optical communication infrastructure technology development. Since the maximum data rate over the air will be up to one terabps, front hole or back hole uh, capacity should be uh, encouraged, encouraged uh, more than one uh, supporting uh, one terabps. So this project will focus on optical communication technology supporting uh, one terabps data rate. The third project is terahertz band RF core part technology development. Since over 100 gigahertz spectrum band is a new band for the wireless communication, RF core part technology will be very challenging. So this project will focus on uh, developing those what part tech, uh, technology. The following project is related to a sub terahertz spectrum band. This project mainly develop 6G channel modeling technology based on terahertz band radio propagation characteristics to characteristic uh, measurement and also develop uh, electromagnetic safety securement technology. The fifth project is related to satellite communication. This project will focus on a North Earth orbit satellite core technology is categorized with the previous satellite communication to support 3D space. This uh, project uh, will develop technologies to support moving uh, devices up to 10 kilometer using mobile wire system. The following project is end-to-end -end super uh, precision network coordinate technology. This project will develop the technology to support end-to-end maximum latency 
under a five millisecond at uh, 800 kilometer distance. And also end to 10 latency variation is plus minus one uh, microsec at 800 kilometer. The eighth project is related to AI technology adaptation to wireless access network. This project will focus on using data based AI technology overcoming the limitation of uh, realizing high complex wireless transmission. The last project is uh, intelligence 6G mobile core network technology. This project will start from this year and will develop super intelligence 6G network core technology, enabling AI based full automation and autonomous emergence of various future intelligence service. This is the last slide uh, showing project roadmap. Uh, most projects were started last year and by 2025, all the projects will be finalized and prepared to contribute a 6G standard. Korean government also have a plan to, uh, will have a, a additional project for 6G from 2026 until uh, 2030 for uh, preparing all this uh, commercialization of 6G. Uh, thank you for your listening. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Choi. If I may take uh, uh, the floor. And again, you've been extremely concise and, and at the same time, very, very comprehensive in presenting this update of uh, where Korea stands in terms of um, its, its work on, uh, on research and development for uh, Beyond 5G. Thank you very much. You also took us in the future with automatic flying cars. So there's a lot of nice prospects, interesting prospects uh, there ahead of us. Um, so this was concludes, I think, the session about updating where we are in terms of our research and development programs. I thought this was very important so that we have the latest information on both sides. And then we can now move to a similar topic to uh, update each other on where we are in terms of the work on standardization, which after all is you know, the main focus uh, of today.